Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Well, hello. Who is... Oh. How is my favorite shipboard acquaintance this evening? Oh, Simon, you, you startled me. I can hardly see you through the fog here on deck. Oh, yes, it is getting thicker, isn't it? <laughs> but I suppose it's to be expected. Last night, nature went on a binge of moonshine, and this is her foggy morning after. Oh, only it's evening. How can you tell through the fog? <laughs> but you know, you have a very pretty laugh, Barbara. I'll listen for it in all of your pictures from now on. Thank you, Simon. But I'm... I'm not going to make any more pictures. I'm retiring. Retiring? At the peak of your career? I'm just tired of pictures, that's all. Barbara, you'll never be able to run away from it. What do you mean? I'm referring to whatever it is that frightens you. Why don't you tell me about it, Barbara? There's nothing to tell. I'm I'm tired. I I need a rest. Please, Simon, don't make me talk about it. There's some things that... Simon, is that someone standing there? No. No, I don't see anyone. Oh, you are nervous. Oh, Simon, if only I could confide in someone, if I could tell you what I... Perhaps I already know more than you think I do. You're cold. Yes. Where's your wrap? Over there someplace on one of those decks. <laughs> I'll find it. I don't see it here, Barbara. Are you sure you... Barbara, behind you! Look out! Barbara! Barbara! Man overboard! Man overboard! Maybe you'd like a swim too, Saint. What? Oh. <laughs> Shot when I heard the familiar call. Is there a doctor in the house? And uh, uh, no, Simon, don't try to get up. I have a flask here. A drink will make you happy. Oh, not right now, thank you. I recall I have some unfinished business to attend to. Barbara. Yes. Was she? They couldn't find her in the fog. She's oh, gone. Poor Barbara. Yes, it was a horrible accident. Horrible, yes. Accident, no. You mean to say she didn't fall overboard? She was murdered. Murdered. But who? I think I know who. In my head, it feels like the Aberdeen Proving Ground. I will mix you a sedative. You know, you're not looking very well. I always look like this when I'm angry. There's only one cure. Yes, I know. The lady with the scales known as Madame Justice. You know, Templar, I've been curious about uh, what makes a man like you think. Uh, Well, I'll tell you. Every eight days or so, someone winds me up. Right now, I'm wound up tight. Tight with fury. Well, as a psychiatrist, I would advise you to unwind a bit. Ah, here we are. Now, drink this. It will put you to sleep after a while. Oh, thank you. You say you think you know who killed Barbara, Simon? I was wrong. I do know. Well, I think you ought to talk to me. Unwind yourself. Well, you think I need psychiatry, Doctor? Well, I think you're too taut at the moment. That plus your concussion is... Might be dangerous. Very well, Doctor. I'll unwind. I'll tell you the entire story. If you don't mind, Simon, here, this will help the rhythm. Huh? The metronome. Psychiatrists often use it. But, uh, rather... No, no, I don't mind. I'd never met Barbara Brooks, although I doubt if there's a human being alive who hasn't heard of her or seen her in the movies. I first saw her the day we boarded ship. There was something in her expression, in the way she walked and talked and smiled, that immediately told me here was someone I should know. 
Her entire demeanor was an attitude of invitation. A romance. Fear, Doctor. She was a frightened lady. She wanted someone near her. I walked over to her there on deck and immediately made myself useful. Her steward evidently had become busy elsewhere, so I tipped my hat and said somewhat idiotically, um, Get your program here, lady. You can't tell the staterooms without the numbers. I beg your pardon. Your steward seems to have deserted you. Oh. I've sailed this scow before, so if it's the direction to your stateroom you're looking well, for... Well, I would like to know. Hmm, I would, too. Uh, number, please. A36, main deck. Thank you very, very much. It's this way. My, uh, my name's Templer. Simon, for short. Mm. And, of course, you're Barbara Brooks. You know, uh, we passed the bar en route to A36, main deck. Does an old-fashioned with a new acquaintance sound inviting? It will, a little later after... It's here on the ship. Who? there's several... I... Oh, that's big. He's gone now, in the corner. Yeah, I think I saw the man you meant. A certain off-center gentleman named Raider. Raider? I, I don't know that name. No, surely you've heard of Phil Raider. He's just as big a star in his line of work as you are in yours. What? What is his line of work? Well, he's, uh... He's an exterminator of human beings. Mr. Tinker, I'm afraid. Well, that was obvious from the moment I first saw you. Why don't you tell me about it? No, I can't. No, I, I'd be killed. That's as good a reason as any for not telling me, but I must warn you I have a peculiar talent for finding things out for myself. Oh, no, you mustn't do anything. Please, please. <laughs> Hello, Raider. Well, Miss Saint. Mm-hmm. World's getting smaller. Yes. Yes, but I understand you're doing your share to see that it doesn't get overcrowded. Uh, traveling for your health again, or just traveling? Just traveling. Raider, why does the mere glimpse of you rounding a corner start a lady's teeth to chattering? Lady? I don't know any ladies. Obviously. Maybe she thought I was someone else. Maybe. And if you're of a mind to annoy her, you'll wish you were. Look, Saint. Just soak up sunshine on this cruise. Don't go poking in any dark places. Might be bad for you. Oh, what sort of bad, Raider? Look, big shot, just so there's no misunderstanding. You butt in where you ain't welcome on this cruise and... Yes? And I'll kill you. How is your head, Sam? And it feels as if a regimental crap game was going on inside of it with jet-propelled dice. You haven't drunk your sedative yet. Here. Oh, thank you. Uh, shall I go on taking the load off of my concussion? Yes, by all means. I think I was present at the next sequence. Yes, sir. Doctor, you were. It was the night of that ridiculous costume ball ship's captains are so fond of arranging. Yes. I remember. We were at the bar together. You were a pirate, I recall. Yes, and you were a clown. The ball was loaded with clowns, and some of them not even aware of their clownishness. But it was gay and sprightly, and the music was good. I remember our conversation, Doctor. You suddenly appeared at my elbow and said in the most shivery, sinister manner... You know, Templar, I have a confession to make to you. Well, I'm always interested in confessions, Doctor. I've had a schoolboy crush on the beautiful Barbara ever since I saw her in pictures first. <laughs> uh, tell me... What does one do about it? Well, I know exactly what I would do if I were you, Doctor. Yes? I'd consult the nearest psychiatrist. <laughs> At the prices we charge? No, thanks. <laughs> I was hoping you'd cut a fellow in on your acquaintanceship, Templar. But uh, if you won't introduce me, uh, won't you at least show me which mask she's hiding under? I think I might be able to make my own introduction. Oh, very well, Doctor. Look for a sylph-like figure in a blue and yellow harlequin costume. Ah, uh, thank you, Templar, thank you. And if you should ever need a good psychiatrist... At the you... prices you charge? <laughs> <laughs> I will be seeing you. <laughs> Don't turn around, Mr. Huh? Templar. I have a pistol in the small of your back. Well, now, really, is that any way to enjoy a war? Listen, Saint, and listen hard. Oh, I'm all ears, except for the small of my back, which feels abnormally large at the moment. Certain arrangements have been made, Saint... It means a big head of lettuce if they go through. So? All the signs say keep out. See that you do. Now, don't turn around. Huh? This costume's so pretty, I'd hate to have to put a hole through my pocket. Well, it's probably just a coincidence, but I've acquired the same regard for the small of my back. Keep regarding it that way, Saint. Don't let your nose wander where it doesn't belong. 
And you might begin by forgetting you saw certain people aboard this boat. See, uh, just tell me how you're going to swing it, Mrs. Miller. Well, well don't be surprised. I'd recognize the notorious Lil Miller's voice on a party line. How are you going to take him, Lil? A palm date or, or perhaps a marked deck? This rod has a hair trigger, Saint. Just a touch and you're... <laughs> Lil, Lil, what's the matter? That girl there, the one in the hall. Lil, Lil! Lil! You're lucky, Saint. I, I'd have shot. Give her air, give her air. Don't crowd. Crowd her all you want to. She won't mind now. Is she? Yes, a stiletto in the back leaves very little doubt. She's dead. You know, Simon, I would never have paid the late Mrs. Miller for a professional card shop. She was anything but the type. Professional card shops are always anything but the type, Doctor. Yeah. And to think I actually played bridge with her myself. With a crook and a hot-headed one, it said. Well, as my old grandmother used to say, Doctor, beware of lady thieves with red hair. <laughs> I guess the lady's red hair accounted for the lack of insulation in her temperament. Oh, how does your head feel, Simon? Better, Doctor. Much better. You still haven't touched your sedative, you know. Oh, haven't I? Uh, I think you'll find that it helps, Simon. Here. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, shortly after the murder of Mrs. Miller, Doctor... I called on her bereaved husband and uh, partner in crime. A very interesting visit it was, too. You have the knack for making all of your visits interesting, Simon. Tell me about it. Well, I found Miller in the bar, quenching his sorrow with the merry waters of the river of forgetful. Fifty grand in the palm of our hands and beep. No more Lil. No more Lil, no more sucker. No more sucker, beep. No more fifty grand. I see you valued your wife highly. Uh, who, who was the sucker, Miller? Ha, <laughs> ha. You're funny. Uh, tell me, what's Phil Raider cruising for, Miller? And uh, don't tell me it's a coincidence he's on board the same ship. You get funnier and funnier. Why is Barbara Brooks so afraid of Raider? You ain't even warm, Think You're a mile wide of the target. Uh, and I'd better use a different kind of ammunition then, Miller. Yeah? Like what? Like a little murder performed on an unwilling sucker in... Reno. Huh? What do you know about that? You won't like going back to Reno, Miller. It gets hot in the summertime, especially in the penitentiary. Well, uh, Raider was with Lil and me on this deal. He All right, did... Miller, put the zipper on. Uh, Raider, well, I, I wasn't going to say anything. Phil, honest, I was just... Skip ta- it, Miller. I always knew someday you'd show canary yellow. I thought you and I had a little understanding, Saint. Well, you've got a reputation for wrong thoughts, Raider. Yeah, but right or wrong, I back my ideas up. To the hilt, Keep Saint. Keep that frog sticker undercover, Raider, or I might take it away from you. And the Dutch courage that rides with it, too. I'll keep it hidden for now. You just be careful of the places where the lights don't shine, Saint. Come on, Miller, I want to talk with you. Well, I'll be out in a little while, Phil. I, I want a drink. You've I'll... drunk enough, Canary. Come on. You'd better go, Miller. And if you can't talk your way out of it, my regards to the fishes. <laughs> And I recall it was shortly after Mr. Raider passed on his second warning that you and I met for the first time professionally. Yes, Doctor, the very next night. <laughs> well, I am very surprised at you. He had warned you to stay away from dark places. <laughs> yes, Doctor, so he had. But I'm perverse by nature, and I like to poke around. I was strolling around the deck with Barbara, getting moonburned and trying desperately to get some more information. So wonderful having you near, Simon. I feel safe. Safe? I refuse to accept the compliment, particularly on a moonlit night at sea. I'm referring to danger, Simon, not romance. They're often the very same thing. I'd like to join the team, Barbara. Why don't you confide in me? Because if I did, we'd both be dead by morning. I must go now. Good night, Simon. Good night. Don't turn around, Templer. I've got a... I know... A gun pointed at the small of my back. That's it. Now, keep away from Barbara Brooks. Am I clear? Clear enough. Anything else? Yeah. Just so it sinks in, Saint. Take this along to remember me by. Once again, you enter the picture, Dr. Norman... You found me there, lying on the deck, 
basking in moonlight. And blood. Uh, go on, Simon. Tell me the rest of it. Well, after your neat job of vulcanizing me, thus saving me a trip to the ship's doctor and innumerable words of explanation, I hit upon a strategy, and my next visit found me calling in the lion's den. I tell you, you're being made a patsy, Raider. You're on the verge of being demoted back to second-class hoodlum. I can take care of myself. Well, I admit a minor sandbagging committed in your good name doesn't amount to much, Raider. But what if the same someone likes your name and decides to use it in uh, other way? What do you mean? I mean murder. You're a lead pipe cinch to pay for one of your own someday, Raider. But meanwhile, how would you feel getting hung for somebody else's shenanigans? I'd be annoyed. You sure would. Look, I'm not rigged up with no murder saint. Lil meant 50 grand to us alive. That's what we figured the sucker was good for. Uh, that's a good enough reason for wanting Lil among the present instead of the late Raider. Uh, tell me, what was the angle? Blackmail? Nah, nah, nothing so crude, Saint. I sponsor the party, spot them, finger them, and oil them, and the millers squeeze them through a deck of cards. Huh? The guy's a sucker for good-looking dames and card games, that's all. That sounds very uncomplicated, easy picking. The guy ain't had the coin long enough to be smart about it. Who's the guy? Nah, he makes water heaters. <laughs> The fat man with the diamonds from Passage. Yeah, that's the sucker. <laughs> I should have tumbled. Looks like you did. I thought you were out for a bust-up. Fifty G's a lot of money, Saint. I figured if I could scare you, it'd be insurance. How about uh, Barbara Brooks? Ah, deal me out. I'm not in on whatever the caper is there. She saw you the day we sailed, and she got scared. Well, maybe it's because I ain't exactly pretty. Yeah. But if you really want to know something, Saint, I'll tell you. I was propositioned on a stunt against that dame a few weeks before we sailed. I turned it down. A big dough, too. A murder deal? Yeah, a big dough to bump her off. Not for me, though. Nah, she's too prominent. Too much heat on those jobs. Who made the offer, Raider? He wasn't exactly interested in leaving his calling court scene. Just a John Smith, as far as I'm concerned. But he had a description, didn't he? Everybody has a description. Well, sure, sure. He was a medium-sized guy with... Hey, the lights. Who turned them off? Get down! Ah! Raider! Raider! Raider, are you... Hey, brown. Brown tie. Blue shirt. Brown tie, blue shirt. Brown tie, blue shirt. <clears throat> Not a very harmonious color scheme, is it? He... Raider. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Raider. At least your last earthly utterance was in the direction of good. Thank you. Tie blue shirt. What did he mean, Simon? Well, it means that either the man for whom I search isn't a very fastidious dresser, doctor, or else... Or else? Or else he's colorblind. Blue and brown just aren't worn together. Well, no, uh, I'll take that drink now, doctor. Oh, and the sedative I mixed for you. Your concussion. Later, doctor, later. Uh, very well. I can see that you're going to be a very difficult patient. I hope you don't mind drinking out of another medicine glass, huh? No, right now I prefer it. Say when? A little more, Doctor. That's fine. Has such a beautiful color, hasn't it, Doctor? Yeah, hasn't it, so? Aren't you going to drink it, Simon? In a moment, Doctor, when I finish my story. Oh, yes, of course, this story. Uh, Barbara's murder was next. Yes, huh? Barbara was next. But immediately before our last meeting on deck in the fog, Doctor... I found out what she was afraid of. You did? But how? It was easy. The steward had some keys. I had some money. The steward has enough now for that chicken ranch he's always dreamed of. You broke into Barbara's stateroom. <laughs> yes. Well, what did you find, Simon? Oh, lingerie, perfume, stockings, and some letters, Doctor. Peculiar letters. Huh? Fan me? Yes. Yes, and all from the same fan. A fan she was once engaged to marry, Doctor. A fan who loved her very much and hated her in equal proportions. Who was so torn between love and hate, he had to kill her. Ah, it's schizophrenic. You should know. What do you mean? Well, you know the classifications. You're the doctor. Oh. <laughs> Drink your sedative, Simon. A colorblind schizophrenic. I don't believe I've ever met one before, Dr. Norman. So colorblind, he mistook the green and orange harlequin costume worn by Lil Miller 
Or the blue and yellow one worn by Barbara. That is very interesting, Simon. Poor Lil. If she'd come to the ball as anything but a harlequin, she'd have lived to take in $50,000. You're sedative, Simon. You know, you were wrong about Lil's hair, Doctor. It wasn't red. It was brown. <laughs> you said it was red. I wanted to see if you'd agree. Uh, you're sedative. Yes, of course. Hand it to me, would you, Doctor? They're alongside the drink. Yeah. No. No, don't try to tell them apart by their aromas, Doctor. It's obvious that they're different colors. Or can't you tell? You find it, Saint. I'd like very much for you to drink it. My doctor, what a pretty purple gun you're wearing. Or is it pink? Drink up, Templar. You hardly feel it. It's just a dash of prussic acid. Uh, doctor Norman, when you give a sedative, you go overboard. Drink it, Templar. Well, you're the doctor. A uh, toast to you, Dr. Norman. To your green shirt, blue tie, and gray handkerchief. None of which match. Here's how... Oh, my eyes! You threw it in my eyes! It was a question of your eyes or my stomach, Doctor. In my eyes, I'm blind! You'll oh. get over it, Doctor, which is more than can be said of me if one of those wild shots of yours should hit me. I know I shouldn't practice medicine without a license, uh. Doctor, any more than you should. But um, here's a sedative from me to you! Pleasant nightmares, Dr. Norman. You have been listening to another adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in a prejudice-filled America, no one would be secure in his job, his business, his church, or his home. Yet racial and religious antagonisms are exploited daily by quacks and adventurers whose followers make up the irresponsible lunatic fringe of American life. Refuse to listen to or spread rumors against any race or religion. Help to stamp out prejudice in our country. Let's judge our neighbors by the character of their lives alone and not on the basis of their religion or origin. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. Michael Cramoy. Our cast included Betty Lou Gerson, Jean Bates, Frank Gerstel, Bill Conrad, and Barney Phillips. The music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Thomas A. McAvity. Vincent Price is soon to be seen in Harry M. Popkins' production of Champagne for Caesar, co-starring Ronald Coleman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.